All right, guys, we're going to take a look at an ambiguous case, law of signs. All right, so option one, there are two ways you can do this. I'm going to show you this, but this would be my preference. Um, option two would be my preference, but I will show you how to do this real quick. All right, so the question is, is it zero, one, or two triangles? You need to find H and compare H to different options. So um, example one, let's say we have this triangle, and let's say that A is equal to... 40, which would mean if you go across, that's little a, right? A little a is equal to 20, and b is equal to 15. Let's say this is your situation, okay? Given that, what do you know? A, is a greater or equal to the height? Well, I don't know the height, so let me find the height. So this is cut off a little bit, but that's height. From our previous video, we know using Sokotoa, right? Sokotoa, Sokotoa. So we know that Sokotoa says sine of the angle A, right here, is going to be the opposite, opposite, which is the height of the triangle over the hypotenuse, which in this case is B. And I'm going to be writing it in general because I don't want to have to recalculate for all three triangles. I'm just going to show it once and use that formula for all three. So if I was to rewrite H, I would multiply both sides by B, so I would get B sine of A. And this is going to be the general formula that we use for each triangle. So working it out for this triangle, if I wanted to find this height, it would be whatever B is, which is 15, then sine of the angle A, which is equal to 40. Okay. If I wanted to find out what H is here, so I'm just going to actually do it all the way across. If I wanted to find out what H is here, I'll do the same thing. So let me label my triangle. The angle A is equal to 30. All right, across from that, you're going to have A is equal to 10. Then you're going to have B is equal to 40. Okay, so if I was to rewrite this, so I have H is equal to B, which is equal to 40, sine of A, which is equal to 30. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to label my triangle. So B is 125, uh, sorry, A is equal to 49. So this angle here is equal to 49. Across from that, all the way here, is going to be 20. And it could be this um, triangle here too, but we'll deal with that in a second. B is equal to 125. So if I was to find the height, height is equal to, here's my general formula, B, which is 125, sine of 49. And if you put all of this in a calculator, and please make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. Okay, it must be in degrees because we're talking about degrees here. If you put this in a calculator, you're going to get H is roughly equal to 10. Here, H is roughly equal to 20. And here, H is roughly equal to 94. Okay, so once I have what my height of each of my triangles are, so this is my height, I can then use that to determine if it's one triangle, uh, zero triangles, or two triangles. Okay, so let's take a look at that. If Remember from our previous video, if A... If A is less than this height, there is no triangle. So is 20 less than 10? No. So there is a triangle here. Let me check this one. Is 10 less than 20? It is, right? 10 is less than 20. So this one is no triangle. So here I have zero triangles because, you know, this cannot be less than the height because when you drop this down, if you imagine a pendulum drops this down, it can't make a triangle. So A is less than... H means zero triangles. Okay, here, 20 is less than 94. That's not true. So these are my only options left for one or two triangles. And you can kind of see, you can cheat here and see that this is two and this is going to be one. But there is, um, there is another way to look at it. So A is greater than B. So we talked about this in the last video. If A, if this is greater than B, then you're making one triangle. If A is greater than B, is that true? A is greater than B, it is true. So this has one triangle, okay? If A is less than B, so if A is smaller than B, which is this is the case, this could be the triangle or this line right here could be the triangle because you can pendulum it to either the right or the left, okay? So if A is less than, so if this is less than this, then you can have two triangles. So again, one triangle is if A is bigger than B. No triangles, A is smaller than H, okay? 
So in summary, we're going to write this out. In summary, if, so we just talked about it, but we're going to write it down. If A is smaller than H, okay, if this right here is smaller than the height, okay, then there is definitely no triangle. All right, if A is greater than the height, then you have two options, right? So this one is no triangle, but then you have two options if A is greater. You have an option that says if A is greater than B, if A is greater than B, you're going to get one triangle. And then you have the option that says if A is less than B, if it's smaller than B, that means I can pendulum it over this on this side. So that's going to be equal to two triangles. So no triangles, one triangle, two triangles. Now, you're not going to remember this. So I prefer the second method that we're going to do it. So option two, you're going to just use the law of sine. You're just going to assume it has one triangle. And then find the missing measurement. And then you're just going to check to work to see if it makes a triangle. Okay, And you're going to understand that in just a second. So I'm going to do the same three examples. But now I'm going to use it this method. Because there's no way I'm going to remember this a week from now. So option two, you're going to use sine to find the missing um, triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and, and just copy down uh, these triangles right here. So I'm just putting in the measurements. So this is A. This is 40. This is little a. This is B is equal to 15. This is 20. This is 30. This is B is equal to 40. A is equal to 10. This is A. All right, this is A here, 49 degrees. B is equal to 125. Uh, A is equal to 95. And I'm just going to label all of this. So I know B is across from capital B, and this must be C then. Okay, B is across from capital B, so this must be C. B is across from capital B, so this must be C. So there are my triangles, okay? Um, I'm going to assume that it makes a triangle and then adjust it. So I'm actually going to keep forward. Instead of first finding out if it makes a triangle, then do the sine law. I'm going to actually do the sine law and then determine if it's a triangle. So I'm going to do it for all of these. All right, so starting off with the first one, well, what does the sine law start um, say? So sine, right, sine of an angle that I'm given, so sine of 40 over whatever that length is, 20, is equal to, and what's the other one I'm given? I'm not given C, but I am given B, right? So I'm going to use sine of B. And remember, you have to match sine with sine and then um, length with length. Sine of B, and I'm given this is 15. So I'm going to look for what B is. So what I do, I multiply both sides by 15, right? So this crosses out. So I'm going to get... 15 sine 40 over 20 is equal to sine B. Well, how do I get B by itself? I take the inverse of that, and I'm just going to write this on the other side. So the inverse of sine is sine to the negative 1. So that's B is equal to sine to the negative 1 of this whole thing. And you want to put that straight in a calculator, and you're going to find that capital B, the angle, is going to be equal to 29.82, roughly. 28.82 degrees. Okay, so that's roughly 29, okay? So now, what does that say? That says this angle right here is equal to 28.82, roughly, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a triangle. And we're going to see if this makes sense. So if this is 40, and I'm just going to round that to 29, and this is 29, can I make a triangle? So remember, all triangles must add up to what? 180, right? So this plus this is going to give me 69. Do I have space to make a triangle? Like, do I have space to make it 180? I do. So this is going to be cool, right? Definitely one triangle. Now I'm going to check if there's two triangles. So what does that mean? That means if I took 180... Because remember, you know, when you're doing the unit circle, just, you know, don't write this down. I'm just going to do it on the side right here. When you have an angle here, that's that angle here is the same on this side too, right? You have the same reference angle. And that's really where this comes from. So this is what we're going to check. So 180, and we're going to subtract this 128.82. Uh, As a matter of fact, I am going to write it. Okay, so I can have this one, which is 28.82. Two, or it also could be on this side, which is that whole thing, right? 
which this is 180, 180 minus the uh, 28, because this is going to be 28.82, is going to give me this whole thing, all right, which is equal to 151.18. Okay, so the question is, can this exist? Can Is this possible? All right, so let's draw a triangle. We know we definitely have one, but do we have two? So now I'm saying, is it possible for B to be, let me call this 151, when it was already, when A was, what, 40? Is it possible for this two to exist? So 150 plus 40 is 191. No way, because it's already past the triangle, right? So this cannot exist, which means it only has one triangle, which makes sense because that's what we had here, okay? So you're just going to repeat that process and check to see if um, it has, if it works. If it doesn't work, then no. So this is also just, again, proven that it's one triangle. We're going to do the same thing for this one. And remember, we should have zero, right? So whatever angle I get, it should, shouldn't should make a triangle. So let's go ahead and do it. So again, what do we have? We have these two right here. So I'm going to set that up. So sine of 30, all right, goes with 10 equals sine of B, which goes with 40. Cross multiply, multiply by 40, So sorry, from both sides. So you're going to get... Uh, 40 sine 30 over 10 is equal to sine B. Take the inverse of B, of sine, sorry. So I'm going to write it on this side. B is equal to sine, the inverse of this. And this is just what you're going to put in the calculator. And just make sure it looks exactly like that. All right, so when you put that in the calculator, you're going to get B is equal to, oh, look at that. It says undefined. Okay. Which means what? It must be zero triangles. It's not even defined. So zero triangles. All right, when I do this one, I should expect to get two different options. So I should expect the first one to work and the second one to work. So let's go ahead and work that out. So again, sine 49 over and 49 goes with 95 is equal to sine B over 125. Multiply both sides by 125. This crosses out. You're going to get 125 sine 49 over 95 equals sine B. How do I get B by itself? Take the inverse of sine. So and I'm going to write it out this way. So sine, inverse of sine. Oh, sorry. B is equal to the inverse of sine of this whole thing, right? So this is what you put in the calculator. 125 sine 49 over 95. Okay, So B is equal to, and again, you're going to put this in the calculator just as it appears. So if you don't get the answer I get, please let me know. All right, so B, the inverse of that is going to be 68.5. All right, we can just call it 69 just to be, you know, close, or, or we can leave it at 68.5. All right, so my first angle, we're saying that this right here is 68.5. So let's see if we can make a triangle with that. So... Here's 49, here's 68.5, right? So when I add those two together, I'm going to get 117.5, which is cool because I still have space for this angle to be whatever, so it adds up to 180, right? Now I'm going to do it again. Remember, you have your reference angle of 68.5, right? But you also have this line over here because sine can have multiple answers. Like, you know, um, if you remember from your unit circle, if you remember from your unit circle, um, sine is equal to a half here, and it's also equal to a half here, right? And that's the thing. So there can be multiple angles, and that's why you have to check each one. So this one is 68.5. So the reference angle for the same one would also be 68.5. So for me to find the distance from here to here, to find what this angle is here, I just do 180 minus 68.5, which I get 111.5. One, one, one okay, so now I'm going to check, does this work? Can this be an angle? Can that make a triangle? So my original triangle is A is 49, and I'm saying, 
can B be this 111.5? Would that work? So if I add those together, I'm going to get 160. Do I still have space for this to be something so it can add up to 180? I do, because if that's true, this can be what, 20, right? So this also works. So in this case, both of these work, so therefore it is two triangles, okay? And that's what I mean by that. You can memorize this, but you may forget, or you can just proceed with, oh, I'm just gonna assume it's, um, it makes a triangle and then check to see if it does or does not, okay? It does take a little bit of practice, so don't worry, we are gonna practice in class.